Hi everyone, Nigel here from uh, S550 Mustang GT UK. Yes, I had to look at the screen because I keep forgetting the name. I'm going to change it because it doesn't really roll off the tongue, does it? I'm going to change the name of the channel. So by the time you see this, the name may well have changed. So this is kind of part two now. We're following on from where we were um, back two years ago, believe it or not, when I actually cut the bottom of the headlamps out. So I cut them out with a, with a hot gun, hot iron, so that I could actually get in there to fit these... Um, these diode dynamics tri-bar LEDs which I have here part number is DD2151 and it's known as 1517 Mustang switchback LED boards EU set the first thing I want to say let's get the negatives out of the way it says on here EU set so in the box we get the LEDs and the wiring and the controllers and everything and a set of instructions so I contacted diode dynamics and asked what about the wiring colour codes? Are they the same on EU cars as they are in the US? So basically, they've got the instructions here. They've got a wiring diagram. There you go. They tell you all what colours to connect up to where. And the reply I got back was, uh, what you need to do is get a circuit tester and test the cables. Thanks. So I put a request out on Mustang 6G forums. And uh, if anybody's not on there, you need to go and have a look if you're a Mustang fan. It's bloody, it's a great, uh, great forum to be on. And the lovely guy from, the kind gentleman from V8, well, V8 underscore motor, who is the guy that runs the YouTube channel Gearhead Daydreams. Brilliant channel. He needs a lot more followers and he's really good. Um, and he starts off with a review of a Kenny Bell um supercharger and then goes into an install but it's him and his buddies and that's a great video to watch because you've got him and his buddies and they're all that none of them are like professional mechanics or anything or you know like it's not like watching cj pony parts where it's boom 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 it's done it's proper you know underneath the gazebo i think it's even raining <laughs> they're working away out so fair play to him i forget your name i'm sorry my friend but um he was my inspiration to do this he's done a video all about cutting it open he went slightly different way about it but his way works absolutely perfectly well and i'm sure my way will as well um since you saw me cut the headlamps open i have actually taped them up with with tape sealed them up and i've been using the car and everything's been absolutely fine so obviously these headlights are very easy to seal but basically you know here's the headlamp here uh, i've got the the lens covered with tape so it doesn't get damaged what a lot of people do is oven them and take the lens away from the plastic backing i've heard of a couple of disaster stories and i've seen a couple of people asking for headlights because they've messed theirs up so Rather than do that, I've cut the bottom open. So if you haven't already seen that, go look at Gearhead Daydream's channel. He'll show you how he's done it with a soldering iron and cut it open. But you can also go and see on my channel, back two years ago, uh, June 2020, I've done there um, about how to cut the bottom open. And I've cut it open completely. And, uh, and I've made some panels to go in to fill the hole in. That way, you've got a resealable panel that goes in to give you access should you have to get in there and replace these these panels at all that's my um that's my angle and that's where I'm sticking to so anyway let's stop waffling and get on with it so uh the first thing I will say while I'm face to face on the camera I am not showing you how to do this I am not telling you how to do this I'm not telling you how to wire it I'm not telling you that you should or shouldn't do it the car didn't come with tri bar leds from the factory to the uk for a reason the reason i do not know there are many other cars on the market that have tri bar or have led day running lights in the headlamp unit in front of the lens toyota gta6 is one of them i don't understand why they why they don't have them i want them because they look amazing it's how the car was designed to look um if you've watched the new 2024 video from ford no from motor trend where the girl goes and speaks to one of the designers in the background is a beautiful metallic green gt500 and it's just sat there with its tri bars on and if that ain't enough inspiration to make you want to do this then nothing is but as i say i'm showing you how i've done it i'm sure i'm going to show you how i've wired it and i'm going to show you how my car is configured so you must do what you want to do um, I will not be held responsible for anything you do, any laws you break, whatever. The other thing, I'm going to wire my car with the, these, you have these control units in there. And they actually connect, one end connects into the lighting unit and then one end connects into the car's loom. 
and I'm going to wire it so that one of these connectors, probably the loom, is going to be sat under the bonnet, easy accessible, so I can just disconnect it and everything that I've added here will go out. So if there's any funny legislation laws that, you know, it's like you go for an MOT, if you have a bold spare tyre, it will fail the MOT. If you take the tyre out and lean it against the wall, your car will pass the MOT. And then once you've passed the MOT, you can put the tyre back in. So, you know, it's one of those. Um, so anyway, without further ado, before I haven't forgotten to say anything, no, without further ado, we'll get to the bench and I'll show I'm going to go about this, make a few little changes and uh, go from there. So I'll see you at the bench. OK, so if you're wondering why you're seeing me sat here at a bench with a modelling board or a cutting mat or whatever, um, it's because my main channel on YouTube is called Nigel's Modelling Bench, where I do a lot of, do a lot of scale models and stuff. And that's my big channel with nearly 20,000 subscribers. And this is where I do all the work. You may have noticed when I just did the talk, the, the face to camera, a um, load of models in the background. That's what I do for my sort of hobby job. That's what I do. So there we go. Um, but I have a passion for Mustangs as well. In fact, I have a model Mustang I'm building at the moment. And when you see that, you'll love it. It'll be coming on that channel soon. So I'll probably put it on this channel as well. Um, so basically, yeah, what we're talking about is fitting this DI Dynamics um, LED mus Mustang switchback tri bars. So the first thing you need is the kit. Now, obviously, the kit will come with the LEDs themselves, which I have here. OK, so these are they're all numbered. So you've got here left three, left two and left one. OK, so they all come numbered and they all come connected like this on a loom. Now, the first thing I'm going to do, because when you because the way we've done this, we're going to glue these in. We're not going to put them in the hot iron and we're going to glue them in with epoxy. And the trouble is with the wiring, it's all made them very springy and they won't just lay down in the lights. So what I'm going to do is disconnect these plugs and then plug them back in after. Now, what I'm going to do is, first of all, I'm going to number these. So this is one, this is two, and this is three. Um, and then we've got blue, because that's the blue wire. We've got red, that's the red wire. And we've got green, because that's the green wire. And the other thing I'm going to do on here is somehow mark that they are left because I've taken the other ones apart already. Uh, I'll do I'll do that when I come to it. I might put a little identification tag on there or something. So basically that's what I'm doing there. And then, so what we can do is disconnect those wiring looms. So that's that's the main part of the kit. We also get these controllers, which are the drivers. Uh, and they're the same, not, they're not handed. You can see on here it says EU sequential, so they obviously know what they're doing, but they can't, when I asked them about wiring, they didn't know what to say, didn't know what to do. So we've got the connectors there, so this end's going to go into our LEDs and our headlights, and then this end is going to go into, the, sorry, this end's going to go into our headlights. I can't remember now which way it goes, but one of them is going to go into the... Yeah, this one goes into the LEDs. This one goes into our wiring loom. OK, so you've just got the four wires going in from your wiring loom and then you've got the five wires coming out. OK, and what we're going to do, we're going to remove this plug so that we don't have to drill great big holes everywhere. So I'm going to remove that plug and then we can get away with just having a six mil hole drilled. And just like the guy from Gearhead Daydream showed us, I'm sorry, I've forgotten his name. Um, we're going to cut away some of this sheathing. OK, because otherwise what happens is if you if you put it through the hole and then you seal it, you have an air passage for moist air to get in and cause your headlamps to fog up. So we're going to remove some of this and then we're going to put some sealer in there, heat shrink over it. And then I'm going to put that through the hole and seal around it. So that will be all sealed nice and solid. And these will be mounted outside. I've got a place for them. I think they're going to go on the car, which will be lovely. So that's the uh, driver. Uh, and then you also get this bag of goodies. This is the rest of the wiring loom that connects into your car. And you've got these Scotch lock type connectors here, which I'm not a big fan of. I probably won't be using them. I'll probably uh, use bullets, piggyback them and then um, heat, seal, heat shrink them. Um, so as far as tools, tools go, I'm going to use Araldite to stick them in with. This is a, 
um, ultra strong. It's not a quick setting. It says it's workable for 90 minutes, handling time 8 hours, full strength 14 hours. I wouldn't use a 5 minute epoxy or anything because I think this is going to be quite a lengthy little process and you're going to be forever mixing it up and if you let the, let the glue go too thick it won't work because what we need to do is get it around these holes around the pegs in the actual headlamp units and we want it to all flow out and sort of meld itself into that form. Uh, we're obviously going to need a stick to mix it up and I've got here a long stick and this is basically a, like a barbecue skewer. So I use these for modelling when I'm painting stuff. You can see I've been putting stuff on it. And I made a black mark around here. That's the depth I'm going to go to. Um, so we need that to reach down the side and get the glue in. So we need a long stick. And we need something to mix our, our epoxy up on. And one thing I always find is really good is a Pringles lid for mixing epoxy on. Because afterwards you can just crack it all off. And it just comes off. I use this for super glue as well. So the, the modeling hobby sort of lends itself well into um, doing stuff with adhesives and stuff like that. So I've also got a torch here. Basically, I'm going to put the torch the other side of the light so that it will light it'll shine in through the lens so I can see what I'm doing when I get down deep. Because when you're deep inside, you need to see where you are, don't you? E. And we also get in the box, we get the instructions. It's tell us how to fit it all and basically there you go and it's this is telling you to this is with the lights all the lenses taken off as you can see so um but you don't need to go to all that trouble and risk ruining your lights you can do it this way so and i've got a little wiring code converter there yeah but that's that will come to that when we actually fit it on the car so right here right now i'm going to get some epoxy mixed up i'm going to get the headlight in place and i'm going to get myself ready to go um, and I've also got to identify that wiring loom. All right, I've, mar I've marked up the wiring looms, just put some tape on there with a left and a right, so that's all done. I think they're identical looms, but you never know, you can't be too careful. So um, basically here's the headlamp with the hole cut out of the bottom. I have made a blanking plate for it uh, from resin, and then that actually screws on with self-tapping screws. Um, these holes I didn't drill. I cut this out with a hot gun. Okay, and that way you don't make any swarf going inside the headlamp. And then these holes, I got a, 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 a pointed steel bar, heated it and just pushed them through to make the holes rather than drill them. And that way you don't get the, the bits going in. The one thing that is a bit confusing, I don't know what happened during manufacture, but there in this headlamp there are lots of bits of white, little white particles, uh, all, almost like tiny grains of sugar. Um, in the other headlamp there are none, so I don't know what's happened. I don't know if something got in there and laid eggs or what, I don't know, but um, uh, it's been like it all the time. It's not something I've done, um, so it's a bit shit, a bit weird, and there seem to be more and more of them. So they're obviously coming from somewhere, so I don't know. But if you bang the headlight, they all sort of come to the bottom, and you've got, on a Mustang, you've got this kind of reservoir area here, this area here, which is behind the bumper, all the crap falls down into there so that's quite handy so anyway um that's where we're going to be putting our leds in there okay so that's the back of the white shark's fins you see in the uh, in the headlamp so obviously i've got the headlamp covered with tape to stop it from getting scratched if i get a screw or a little bit of metal or something on here and then slide it across the bench i'm going to ruin it so anyway um we've got to get down in there and as you can see down in the bottom it's quite dark so what i'm doing i've got a torch and then I can go in from the from the other side and I can light up in there and if I can get the camera you can see the light in there actually lights up and helps me helps me see it all so it's not going to be very easy to film this but um, I'm sure you'll get the idea of what I'm doing so I've got the stick as I say I've got the long reach stick and what I've done I've made this black mark and then that black mark corresponds to this pin that's sticking up here you can see that pin, I think the camera's probably whited out on it. There's a pin sticking up there. So basically what I can do is go in with the glue and then I know I need to stop there and then put the glue on that pin. If I go too far, as you can see up here, you can see that the stick, you can see there, the stick will come and it will touch the back of the lens. And I know it's hidden by the bumper, but it just looks unprofessional. So. There we go. So the first thing I've got to do now is mix up some of the Araldite, get some in there. I think first things first, we'll check that these fit. Uh, so this is the right headlamp and that's going to go in there. That's number three. So that's going to drop in. 
like so. I know it goes in because I've had it in there already. It's just a bit tight going through the turns. <laughs> this is crazy, it's been in there. It's because the camera's on. There we go. So what we do is we slide it into there, into the number two position, and then slide it over. So that's the way to get it in. Right. And there we are. So that's gone in like that. Okay, and now because there's no wiring, you see, that will just sit there under its own weight and the glue will do its work. Um, I may actually wedge something in there. I've got some clothes pegs here. I wonder if I wedge a clothes peg in there. That may help to hold it in. As I say, I'm doing this live on camera. I haven't sort of done the other side first. But it looks like, I, yeah, I can wedge that clothes peg in there. Or wedge something in there and that'll just hold it down. So um, there we go. So I know that will go in there now. And now if getting out is going to be the fun part. There we go. Easy. So, uh, first things first, we'll mix up some glue, we'll get some glue on those bottom pins and then we'll get them in. Um, I would be happy with just putting the glue over the top and letting it capillary around, but I would rather make sure I've got some on the base of that pin so I know that it's glued down properly. So I'm going to mix up some and then I'll be back. Right, so I've mixed up some epoxy, not too much, just enough to get this one done. And I'm going to put a drop on the end of there, I don't want it so much that it drips off. And then I'm going to go into here, I can see that the, the light is down at the bottom. So I'm going to go into here, I'm going to make sure I don't touch the anything on the way. And then I'm just going to put some on that pin down at the bottom, come away, job done. And then I can do the same on number two which is a lot easier because we've got a bit more room. We come down. Get some glue on there. And then the same on number three. I'm going to put a little bit more on number two actually because I didn't get very much on there. And then do the same on number three, which I can hardly see at all. There we go. This is the point of having this torch. Put that down in there. There we go. Now I know I've got glue on there. So we can do that. I'm going to grab a cotton bud because I've got some glue on there. Just wipe that away. Right. So I'm going to start with number three, I think. So number three is going to slide over the top of two and then drop down in. And there we go, it's gone straight on, so that's brilliant. So that's awesome. Now we can get some epoxy. And then we can just lift up number three, put some epoxy underneath it, drop it down. And there we are. So I think what I'll do this time is put some on the base of here before I go in. Again, cotton bud. Remove that excess from there. Number two, make sure the connector is at the back. So that's going to go in. In fact, I want to make sure I don't get any glue on the front of these LEDs, don't I? So that's going to go in like so. I'm not sure that that's gone on the pins properly. on there properly now. So there we are. And then I'll put a drop of glue onto the base of number one. And 
and then slot that one in just like the others. Wow, that's difficult. Just find the hole at this end and then let the holes at the other end find themselves. There we go. I'm going to grab another one of these long sticks. Just so I can get in there and push. Push the back end down. There we go. Then we can come in with our epoxy and with a nice big blob. We can come in and get some. to the tops of those pins and that what that will do that will kind of dry around a pin and kind of cast itself at all its own sort of holding mechanism if you like let's get that torch in the right place so I can see what I'm doing I'm gonna get into there just get a drop onto there and then have some more here, put it onto the top of number one. Oops. As I say, once these are in, it doesn't really matter if you if you're touching bits and pieces with the glue, as long as you don't go too deep so you touch the lens, it doesn't really matter because there's nothing that's going to be seen. You've got it all blocked off. What you don't want to do is get it all over the um, all over the lenses. And there we go. And the other beauty of doing it this way with the screwed on panel is if they do work loose or as I say if one of the panels goes out and you have to replace it then it's just a simple case of unscrewing the panel and, and, and taking it out. Whereas if you've, you know, if you've removed your lenses the only way in is to remove the lens again and if you've cut this panel out and then welded it back up again you need to cut it open and weld it back up again and I think there's only so many times you're going to get away with that so I'm going to leave that now to dry literally for 24 hours and uh, go from there so see you in a minute all right guys in real time I've, I've just finished doing the left hand side and I'm really glad that I noticed there is a bit of a problem of fitting these you have to be a little bit careful um, hopefully there's a picture of the instructions because I can't show you in the actual lights themselves. Um, I don't know if you can make it out on here, but on those panels there are two holes at each end and two pins on the actual uh, LED unit, on the um, tri-bar unit. So basically you've got four pins like this, okay, and then you've got your, your plate your diodynamics plate and it's got four holes in it and the problem is these holes is what called it's what's called foul fit you just drop them on if they were precisely made and everything the tolerances in the stamping and the tolerances in the mold tool and the plastic shrinkage and all that all that good stuff would have to be really really tied up so what they do is they give it lots and lots of clearance so hence you've got quite a lot of clearance around each hole and what you can do is get it in like that so I actually had the middle one, number two, in my left hand headlamp and it wasn't until I went to move it, I thought that doesn't look right and I noticed it was actually like this and there is enough play that will allow you to do that so you need to make sure that you've got all four holes over all four pins um, you'd have thought that they would have been made in such a way you couldn't do that but you can actually do it, you can actually and the way to look, when you look down inside, you'll see the three Tri bar things going away from you, the white plastic mouldings, and if you look at the aluminium plate you've put in, it should be parallel in all three, and you, and you'll see that if it's out, because if it's out, it's out a long way. It's not like this much. It's it's sort of a good 10, 12 millimeters out. So just make sure before you get them done. 
the other thing I noticed, I left the headlamps stood on the bench like this. And I noticed that the epoxy that I put around here had started to all run off, sort of run down, sag if you like, not run, sag. So what I've done, I've put the headlamps now so that they're sort of basically parallel, so that all the glue, all the epoxy will just sit there and do its job and bomb them in, in that area. I'm sure that if we ever have to take them out, we could just basically come in with a screwdriver or just come in with a knife and cut away the epoxy at the top and just lever them out. I'm sure it'll be absolutely fine. Um, or maybe if the LED plates are knackered anyway, perhaps apply some heat to the LED, the aluminium plate and that will maybe help it release as well. But um, I don't think we don't worry about things like that. So um, that's just my little bit of advice for you there. Make sure you've got all four pins in all four holes because you can actually fit it with a pin in there, a pin in there, a pin in there and a pin over here. So it, it can actually be done. It'll probably be something like that. But you can actually do it, so you need to make sure you got it all four in. Okay. Okay, so here we are. Two days later, we're back. And as you can see, I've done this one. And we've got the, the wire here. We've got the cable coming through. We've got sealant all around the cable. The cable, the cable is also sealed on the inside. We've got my resin moulded plate on here. We've got sealer all around there. And it's all looking good. I've also got a P-clip on here, which is holding the cable. So that when the cable is moving around or getting pulled, or if I stick the end up in to change a bulb or something, if I catch the cable, it's not going to pull that. It's going to pull on the P-clip. So uh, that was just a little afterthought. So um, how did I do this? I'm going to show you now. Right, so here is the left-hand headlamp. And as you can see, we've got the diodes in there. The glue is all dried off and everything's good. I've made a hole here and put a rubber grommet in there. Um, just to get the cable through. I was going to put the cable coming through my plate but I thought it was better to have it independent and then if I, if I do have to take the plate off to get in there for something then I don't have to worry about pulling on the cable and everything. So I'll do it independently and then it's like it's better that way. Also the plastic is thinner so it's more suitable for a grommet than having a you know a thick wedge in there. Um, I have given it a vacuum out you know, you're never going to get everything out. Oh, by the way, with regards to the um, to making the hole, what I did, I got like a hot a hot screwdriver. So I, I just used a metal bar, I think. And then I just sort of basically made a hole. And then what I did, I turned the headlight out the right way and went up from underneath with a drill and drilled it out. It's nine and a half millimetres to suit that grommet. And that grommet's in there, got in from the inside so that it's all holding in there nicely. So uh, I'm just... Actually, it does feel like it's moved there a bit. But that's all in there nicely, and basically we will get a cable to come through there. So the first thing we need to do is get this cable, which is our, you can see it's got the L on it, it's the left hand cable. So the first thing we need to do is get the, uh, get the cable connected, and then get it through that, oh. And also, the other thing we want to do, thank you to the guy for Gearhead Daydreams, he actually, I, I probably wouldn't have thought of it. You don't want to be putting this through the through the hole and then putting silicone around it because obviously air can get past the cables. So what we're going to do is we're going to shorten this sheathing. We're going to take this end of the sheathing off. We're going to remove this plug and we're going to then put some heat shrink around it, put some sealant inside the heat shrink and then shrink the heat shrink so it actually forms a seal around the cables and then we'll heat shrink onto that heat shrink and then seal that into there. So you've got no way of the air passing over the cables and getting in. So the first thing we need to do is get this plug off. I'm going to take this L off because I obviously don't need it on there now because the other one is done. So we need to get these wires off of this plug uh, which means you don't have to go making massive holes. And the easiest way to do this, I've got here, this is, um, this is a reset button for an iPhone. But you could use anything small. And if you look down in this plug, you can see in there, there are some holes. There's some big holes. As you look at it now, there's big holes below. Okay. But there's also some tiny holes above. So what I'm going to do is put that iPhone setting key in there. Push it that way so I'm holding the plug and I'm pushing pushing that up and I can pull the cable out put it into the next one I've actually photographed the plug so I know which way the cable the cables go back in okay and it's as simple as that just pull them out 
Okay. Right, so now we've done that, we've got that connector off and I've just put some masking tape around the, um, any old tape will do, it's just to stop them catching on this sheathing when we take it off. And I'm going to just leave a little bit of sheathing on here for the inside the light. And what I'm going to do is come along with a knife. Okay, I'm using a modelling knife here, you can use any old knife. I'm going to make sure I don't have any cables in there. And just cut through the sheathing. Okay, so what I'm going to do is squeezing the cables down, pulling the sheathing up, and just making sure I don't have any wires trapped in there. The other way you could do it with a little pair of nippers. Get in there, make sure you're above the wires. Just cut through like that. You need to make sure you're not cutting the wires. Obviously. If you do, it's like the end of the road. You just put a bullet connector in there and repair them. It's all going to be inside the lights. So it's all going to be sealed and everything. But the beauty I like using a knife rather than the cutters is with the cutters you won't feel necessarily if you've got a cable in the way. But I think with the knife you would. Especially a knife with a slightly blunt blade like I've got here. So just go around and carry on and then keep doing that until you can get it all apart. Right, so we've got that cut through now, so we can go around there. What we're going to do is cut this sheathing off of this end, this heat shrink, because it just makes it a lot easier to get the um, to get the cables. It's not so much getting them out now, it's pushing them back up through afterwards. So I found that it's easier to uh, just take this off. Just get under there with a knife and just cut this away. You may decide not to use any of this, just leave it all bare wires, but... Uh, I'm going to leave the sheathing on there, it keeps it all neat and tidy, doesn't it? It keeps it all in one place. Yeah, this knife is very blunt. So there we go, pull that off of there, that's that done. And then we can literally just slide those cables down through the sheathing, pull that sheathing off. Then what I'm going to do, I'm going to get a bin or something here, and I'm going to cut an inch and a half or so away. And the reason I do that, did that is when I did the last one, it all just shredded into a million little fibres rather than stayed in one piece. So there we go, so that's cut off neatly now. So we can put that to one side, we can throw that in the bin. And we want to get some heat shrink onto here and shrink that down. So we can get this heat shrink through here, just like so. And then the fun bit is going to be trying to get this in here, all of that to go in. It's going to be really fun. But we may get there, let's see. There we go, we got it in. So what we'll do is put it right over the top and then go back over just to make sure we, oh, if everything's going in the right direction. Get it about half and half and then we can cut in with a heat gun. And heat up the heat shrink. Let's put set in. And shrink that down. And that'll just keep everything neat and tidy for us. So there we are. That's all done. That's all nice and neat and tidy. So now what we need to do is plug these into these LEDs, which I'm not going to do on camera because it's a nightmare to get in there. I'm going to plug those into there, and then we're going to put this cable up through. In fact, what we'll do is I'm going to put this cable up through here first. What I'm going to do is bend that into a right angle, and then get up under there. There's a piece of plastic there in the way like a shelf almost, we get that up through there, pull that up through there like that and there we go, and then we'll have that cable there will be remain inside and we'll have this cable here on the outside. So as you can see now, cables are in there all connected and I've pulled this heat shrink up through there, there's a reason for that. So what we need to do now is put another piece of heat shrink, so I need to get another one of my smaller ones and I'm going to cut this in half is it the smaller one or the bigger one? That's the bigger one, isn't it? I need the smaller one. So we'll get 
one of these, cut it in half. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is get my sealer, and I'm using, this is basically Tiger Seal, Black Tiger Seal, okay? Uh, it's a brand new tube, I'm using a brand new tube because I don't want to risk having something too thick and lumpy in there. So I'm just going to put some of this on here, just like so. Get that off of there, right. Put that to one side. And then with my little screwdriver I'm just going to manipulate it so that it goes in and around all the wires. Yeah, I want it to be in all the wires. And I'm going to thank you to, th as I say, thank you to the man, V8 Motor, Gearhead Daydreams. He put me onto this. Thank you very much, mate. He's done a video on how to do this, as I said. And uh, he uses, he cuts the bottom open rather than, and bends it open and then re-welds it rather than doing it this way. But um, end result's the same. I just, I just did it this way. I don't, there's no real reason for it. It just means you can get in there without having to cut it all open if we need to. But, um, hopefully we'll never need to. At the end of the day, what you're trying to achieve is a sealed headlamp. So you don't want any water getting in there so you don't get the condensation on your... That was clever, wouldn't it? Touch that. Okay, so that's that like that. So now we can get our piece of heat shield. Heat shield? Heat shrink. Put that through there. And then feed that down over just like so and then push that over those cables like that and I'm going to make that go over the next piece of heat shrink and then once again take our, our, our heater keep this down and what that will do that will squeeze all that tiger seal in between those wires and form a, an airtight joint. There we go. That's that done. Okay, so now we've got a nice tight joint on there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to push this down. Once we put the this back on, we're going to push this down in and we're going to seal around that so that it's that that's doing all the sealing. Because remember, if we had, if you seal it there and then you have it like this, you could still get air going past the cables here. You need to be sealing it into this rubber this grommet at the same point as that sealer is in there so that no air can get past. Uh, so what we're going to do now is put this back on. So we can slide that back up through there. This is uh, the last one. It's a little bit difficult getting this through. But it's a lot easier this time around. It's unusual things go well on camera that have gone really, that have gone fine, been difficult off camera. Maybe I spoke too soon. There we go. You can see how this end will freeze open, but I'm not going to worry about that in a moment. Okay, so we'll pull that through, so we've got about an inch and a half of cable exposed there. Then we'll get another piece of heat shrink. Get that over there. Like so, and then we'll slide that down over. Just like that. to go over those cables. For some reason we've got a kink in the cables there. I don't know why. It's a bit weird. Slide that over there. Get that to go over that original piece of heat shield. Just like that. And then once again. Heat shrink that.
Right, we're going to put this, this, remember this is the sealed bit, we're going to put this down through that grommet, okay, so that it's sitting roughly like that, so that it's halfway in. Okay, so we can pull that out like that, I'm going to get some sealant down in this hole, just like so. And then I'm going to use my little screwdriver. push the sealant all the way around so that it's all the way around that grommet so there's no gaps left at all and then we can push the cable down through we know then that we've got sealant all the way around that grommet okay I'm going to put some more on there Stress enough how important it is to have this airtight. Just like so. And remember, this is not like a silicon sealant, this is actually a polyurethane adhesive. So that's that like that. We'll leave that like that. We are going to go around the grommet, but what I'm going to do is fit this panel first. So, what we're going to do now is grab our sealing panel here. Uh, and that's going to go on like that and then the screws will go down and hold that in so I'm going to oops I'm going to take this and I'm going to put sealant all the way around the edge you don't need to see me do that so I'll come back when I've done that right so we've got sealant on there now so I'll just pick this up and then make sure the sealant goes around the screw holes because otherwise the screws could become an entry point for air. I actually drilled one of these holes a little bit too far in and end up with it. You can just see on there, you just see on there the hole is actually off the edge of the plastic, but it's absolutely fine. As I say, this is a polyurethane adhesive, so it'll glue it in anyway, as well as seal it. So that will keep us all nice and sealed and airtight. Right. Now we can just drop this on. Like so. Give it a little push down into place and then I'm going to grab those screws. I've got these special screws and I don't know what they're called. But if you, you notice that most self-tappers have a... Um, I wanted the quarter one, there we go, that's the quarter. I don't need that speed nut. These screws, they have a, you can see they don't have a pointed end. I don't know what they're called, but these are actually from a HPI RC car. So that's what I used. I decided to use these because they don't have the point on the end, which makes them a little bit more difficult to screw in. Okay, we're going to put all these in just to just to pick up the holes first. You can see I'm having a bit of struggle here because, the, because they don't have a point on the end, you struggle to find the hole misses. Who were misses, should I say? There we go, that's gone in now. Once you've got a couple in, you, the rest should find their way in. So I'm going to screw the rest of these in and then I'll come back when I've done that because I need to stand up. Right, so that's those all done. All screwed in. So now what we need to do is come along and deal with... See that it's terrible stuff and it gets bloody everywhere. We now need to come along and seal this in here. So I'm going to put a big old lump on there. Just like so. And then I can... Play with that and get it nice and smoothed out. And with the cable clamped in place, get it around the edge of the grommet as well. With the cable clamped in place, you can see we won't have any issues with that joint moving or being pulled about.
there we are. So we've got a nice thick layer. We've got like a triple seal there because we've got the sealer inside the heat shrink. Then we've got the heat shrink. Then we've got another piece of heat shrink going over that one. And then we've got a seal over that. So, you know, the moisture would have a very hard job to find its way in around this cable. There we are. That's the grommet all sealed in as well. So what we need to do now is put the connector back on the end of the cable and then just wait for it all to dry. Okay, so we get the heat shrink on here now. So we get a piece of heat shrink, slide it over those cables, slide it over the heat shrink, which is easier said than done. Not over the heat shrink, over the sheathing, sorry. Get it about like that, so we've got a little bit to play with. In fact, what I'm going to do is fit the plug first, because what I found when I did the last one, I need it better to have a bit of flexibility in the plugs. So what I'll do is fit the plug first. We're going to get this masking tape off of here. Which is easier said than done. Right, that's that off of there. And then what I'm going to do with a knife, I'm going to come along and all of these connectors have a barb on them on the back, which will hold the help to hold it in and I'm just going to raise them up a touch because when we take them out we tend to push them down a bit so it just make sure they're nice and secure we don't want to go bend them up vertically or anything just give them a tiny little tweak just to lift them up just a touch just like that okay so we'll get the connector connectors here I've got my photograph um, so what's going on there Right, uh, just want to show you my, there you go, you can see my uh, screensaver there, GT4 bus down from the UK Championships, British GT, that's run by Academy Motorsports, so, Mustangs forever, eh? Right, so I've got a photograph, there's a photograph of the plug there, you can see, so we've got white, blue, red, green, black, so put that down here, and I'm going to grab this cable, and the plug is with that, the photograph is taken with that side there, so the first one going in this side is going to be the black. Now make sure we're going to put it in with the barb facing the right way up. That side. There we go. I can't pull that off of there now because it's, it's barbed in. So that's that side. And the next one is green. So the actual barb goes towards the side with the clip on it. So it's going to go that way round. So the next one going in is green. You heard that one click. Next one is red. So that's going to have to be turned over. No, it's not. We like that. Next one is blue. That's going to go in like that. And then the last one is obviously going to be the white. That's going to go like that. So there we are, that's that in. So we got our heat shrink there. We can pull that down and then put some heat on it. And it just gives us a nice tidy looking job. So that's it guys. So you can see now you can move that cable around. It's not affecting that joint at all. So it's not going to, you're not going to have it rattling around and pulled or anything. It's going to, you know, damage that joint. Because it's the last thing you want. You do not want any air getting in there or in around here. So, um, <clears throat> like I say, we're going to leave that to dry now. And then we're going to go and plug one in on the car and do some testing and see how it looks. Right, so we'll call it a day there, I think. Um, I was going to do this all in one and go on and talk about the wiring as well. But I've noticed this video is already nearly an hour long. And the wiring is going to be, obviously, I asked the question about wiring. Uh, as I say, I asked Dynamics, and they just said, you need to get your circuit tester out. Thanks. Um, so V8 Motor came back to me, gave me some hints and everything. And in the meantime, I actually just looked at the instructions and sort of picked up on what they were talking about. So I've come up with a, my own wiring diagram, if you like. And I'll go through the colours on my car in the next video. So there will be a part three. 
So part three is all going to be about test. I've already tested them to make sure they work, obviously. Uh, but it's going to be testing them and I'm going to talk about and show you, you know, about using bulbs, not using bulbs, functionality, not using some of the functionality. So we'll go on with that. So I'll see you all very soon for that one, um, probably within the next couple of days. And I'll... Um, and I'll catch up with you then. So thanks for watching this one. If you haven't like, if you like the video, hit the like, please. And if you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe to the channel. And uh, there will be more stuff coming soon. I've got some lowering springs and wheels and stuff. I've already done the exhaust, as you know, and the jacking rails. And um, I'm sure there'll be plenty of other stuff to come. So well, we've got the oil cooler stuff as well. In the next video, I will show you what I've done with the coolant and everything on the oil cooler side of things. Um, because that is all completely rehashed now as well. So I'll see you all soon for that one. Bye for now.